Okay, so this video we're discussing the differences between the original function, the derivative, and the second derivative graphs, and how what is their relationship amongst each other. So to see how the derivative of f can tell us where the function is increasing or decreasing, we look at this particular example, or this graph. Between a and b, and between C and D, the tangent lines have a positive slope. So we know that the derivative graph, if we were to draw it based on this original function graph, that where the original function is increasing between A and B, between C and D, we would expect the derivative to be positive or above the x-axis. Similarly, between B and C, we have a decreasing piece or interval of the function and we would expect the derivative to be negative or exist under the x-axis so we would expect that from a to b we'd be up here from b to c we'd be down here and from c to d we'd be above the x-axis so by what i just drew with my mouse it's the, i'm thinking that the derivative graph would look like an up right side up parabola so the general rule states that if the first derivative is greater than zero or positive on a particular interval, then that tells us that the original function is increasing on that same interval. And similarly, if the first derivative is negative on a particular interval, then the original function is decreasing on that same interval. Let's take a look at this example where we are looking at the derivative and we are trying to guess what a possible original function could look like if this was the derivative of the graph. So things that I wanna pay attention to are the points at which the derivative crosses the x-axis. And that's these two points. So that's the threshold, those are mins or those are maxes. So this is above the x-axis on this interval, and therefore I know that the original function is increasing from negative infinity to negative one. The interval between negative one and one is under the x-axis, and therefore I would expect the original function to be decreasing from negative one to one. And from one to positive infinity, I am above the x-axis again, and therefore would expect my original function to be increasing. Okay, so I am increasing up until this point negative one, then I'm decreasing until one, and then I'm increasing again. Now this is only one possible solution, as I could have crossed the x-axis at any place. I could have been much higher on the y-axis or much lower. Um, but right now we're just focused on the basics is where the derivative crosses the x-axis is where there are mins and maxes in the original function and therefore changing between increasing and decreasing. So what does the second derivative say about the original function? Well, let's see how the sign of the second derivative affects the appearance of the original graph. Since the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative, we know that if the second derivative is positive, then the first derivative is an increasing function. So notice that one derivative away has the same relationship. Okay, so now we're treating the first derivative function as the original, and the second derivative function would have the same relationship with the first derivative function as we just saw the first derivative had with the original function. So showing a graph of an original function, and we're looking at the slopes of the tangent lines, we're decreasing here, we have a negative slope, so therefore I'd expect the first derivative to be below the x-axis. Then we have a minimum that occurs at that minimum is exactly where the first derivative would cross the x-axis. And then we're increasing from there on out. So I know that the original, I'm sorry, the derivative would be above the x-axis at that point. Now, when we're referencing the second derivative, if we are looking at, um, 
Uh, so the slope of the curve becomes progressively larger as the x increases. And we observe that as a consequence, the curve bends upward. Such a curve is called concave up. Okay, so here we have a concave up effect um, when the second derivative is positive. The original function is going to be smiling. And when the second derivative is known to be negative, the two derivatives away, so the first original function will be frowning. We summarize this by saying the second derivative is positive on a particular interval. The original function two steps away would be concave up. So positive second derivative, smiling original function. Negative second derivative, frowning original function. We take a look at this example, and if we are looking at this, this represents the population graph for some particular group of honeybees. Um, how does the rate of the population increase change over time? When is the rate the highest? Over what intervals of this concave uh, of this curve are concave upward and concave downward? So in order to dive into this analysis, we break this apart. So by looking at the slope of the curves as t increases, we see that the rate of the increase of the population is initially very small. Then it gets larger until it reaches a maximum of about 12 weeks, and then decreases as the population begins to level off. So if I go back to the graph, they're saying that there's a slow increase. So we see that the steepness of this, this particular line is not very. Then between 9 and 12, we have a much steeper area, which means the increase is going faster. So we're increasing at all times, but the rate at which we're increasing is determined by the steepness of the curve itself. So between 9 and 12, we have the steepest portion of the curve, which means that's the fastest increase area. And then we start to curve out again, and we see that we are reaching what's called a carrying capacity, or where the population of bees will not overcome because other factors um, don't allow it to take over the world. So if we're looking, here is concave up between 3 and 12. And between 12 and 18, we have concave down. In the example, the population curve changed from concave up to concave down at approximately the point 12, like I just showed you. And this point has a special name. It's called the inflection point. So an inflection point is a change, is a point at which there's a change in concavity where the frown turns upside down or vice versa. The significance of this point is that the rate of the population increases has its maximum value there and this inflection point is the difference between concavity. Okay, let's try to draw. So not being able to read graphs is one half of the battle. The other half of the battle is being able to draw these based on certain stipulations that are given to you. Now we've done a little bit about this in a future, uh, sorry, in a past section where I showed you guys how to use limits and I used what I called the imaginary walls in order to draw this. Now we're just adding some more things, first derivative, second derivative, and limits. And I'm going to use the same exact um, approach that I did when I showed you guys on the physical whiteboard in class. Let me make some pointers. And we'll walk ourselves through each of these. So the very first says that the derivative is positive Okay, the derivative is positive on an interval from negative infinity to one. So I'm gonna mark my imaginary wall because this x equals one seems to be an important marker. And it says everything to the left of this imaginary wall, the derivative is positive. So if we think about the original function that we're trying to draw, f of x, a positive derivative on an interval indicates that the original function is increasing. So I'm gonna make note that my expectation on this entire chunk is an increasing function. And the, sec and the first derivative is negative on one to infinity, which tells me the original function is decreasing. Okay, now let's switch colors and let's discuss the second derivative. So the second derivative seems to have 
a positive second derivative on negative infinity to negative 2 and 2 to positive infinity. So I'm going to put my imaginary walls at negative 2 and positive 2. To the left of negative 2, it says that the second derivative is positive, which indicates a smiling. And from 2 to infinity, same thing, we're smiling. But then it tells me that the second derivative is negative between negative 2 and 2, which is telling me the original function is frowning in this, this chunk, this place. Okay, so between the orange and the green now, I'm getting an idea of what I'm looking at. So the only thing that I need to adjust in my drawing right now is I kind of made it look like it was going to come back up and increase. And I need to make sure that I don't draw an increase as the orange lines tell me that from negative infinity to positive one, there is no more, um, th sorry, that's decrease. There is no decreasing section, it's all increasing. So I'm gonna have to be careful with how I draw that. And the same is true about this little part. I need to make sure I don't go back up and increase as my orange tells me that I should be decreasing at all times after that imaginary orange line. Okay, so now I take a look at the limits. It tells me if I read the limit as x approaches negative infinity, so here's negative infinity, the function I'm going to draw is going to approach a y value of negative 2. Okay, so we're going to have an approach here. And then it tells me that the limit as I go to positive infinity, the y value that my function is going to approach is 0. Okay, now with all my little colors, again, this can get very confusing very quickly. I do get that, but I believe that the more you find a way that works for you to map up all these things, for me particularly, I need to see all of them on the same mapping and then try to draw. So I'm going to start with these little arrows here that I got from the last part. I know that I need to be increasing all the way to my orange dotted line but I also need to be concave up and start to have an inflection point right here and switching to concave down. So here we go, here we go, still increasing. At this point, I've reached a maximum. I see that I have a concave up here and approximately at the green dotted line is where I'm switching over to concave down, but I didn't decrease yet. Over here, I need to go concave down till about here and then start to concave up and finish my ending. So the red marks the actual drawing of the function. Okay, so we still have um, some specifics not ironed out for us. For example, we don't exactly know where the maximum is, how high this bump was supposed to be, and we don't necessarily know exactly where these x-intercepts are. Um, but that's what we will work on in the future for those little details and have all of those put together. But we're getting to the point now that we can really structure these graphs and understand what the derivative looked like or what an original function looked like based on a bunch of information. Okay, this concludes 2.8.